So, as you might have guessed from the title, in this video we'll be motion tracking a video made with a, a phone. <laughs> we'll be motion tracking a video made with my phone. There are two main ways to do that, manually or just let the computer do the stuff. In this video we'll let Blender do it. So, add a new workspace, go into VFX and motion tracking. This way we have everything we need in one window. Click the open button and load in your footage. There are always three things we need to do before starting tracking. Scene frames, standard colors and set the frame rates. Set the scene frames button will automatically make your timeline as long as your footage so you don't have to do it manually. But oh look at these colors. Turn them back to standard inside the render properties right under color management. This panel is very useful for compositing too. Last but not least, set the frame rate to match your footage in the output properties. No option for your frame rate, set to custom, insert the number of frames and divide by 100. That's great, now you can continue working with this footage or convert it into an image sequence if you're working with a potato PC like I used to do. In this case we'll continue like this. Also remember to prefetch your footage, which means load it into your memory, this way it will work smoothly every time you play it. Alrighty, now let's see the tracking settings. To place a tracker, hit Ctrl click anywhere. Points with high contrast are always the best. In the tracking settings, you can find a few options. Pattern size, which predetermines how big the tracker is. With Alt S, you can see the search size. And this means exactly what you think. The area where Blender is going to search for that pattern. The bigger, the better, but also the more computational power. Also remember to set the motion model depending on the movement of your camera. In this case I was moving forward, so I guess location and scale make sense. Then normalize, this will tell Blender to ignore all light changes. So these are all the things I do before the actual tracking. Let's detect those trackers now. Notice we don't have many trackers on the floor. Go into the annotation panel and draw an area where you want more trackers. Detect features again and this time click on the little panel down there. Select placement inside the notated area and turn the threshold down. This way it detects more trackers. Also bring the distance down. More trackers! By the way you can delete the annotation on the right panel. Now select all the trackers with A and press Ctrl T. This will track everything forward. Oh no, some of our trackers didn't make it through. Just go back a few frames and detect features again. Remember to press A again to select them all, then Ctrl T. This way Blender will track the old ones and the freshly detected trackers. You can see some trackers are going totally nuts, but don't worry, we'll clean this beautiful mess later. Also go back to the frame where you detected the new features. Press A and Ctrl Shift T to track them in the opposite direction too. Also remember to save, Blender just crashed on me while I was tracking. Now let's see how we're doing. Going to the solve panel, we can start refining all these trackers now. Let's start with the keyframes. You must select two areas with two different perspectives so that Blender can calculate where these points should be in 3D space based on that motion. First let's solve the camera motion. 13 pixels, that means Blender has an average error per tracker of about 13 pixels, which means your 3D models will be all shaky and positioned in the wrong position in 3D space. And that's quite bad. Let's see what we can do to reduce this number. Under cleanup, select filter tracks first of all. Blender will get rid of all the crazy tracks. If it's selecting too many of them, bring the threshold up a little. Solve again, try checking focal length and optical center too. 2.9 pixels, wow, we're getting close. You can also clean some of these tracks based on their average pixel error. To see that, go under clip display and check the info box. Select all the trackers and you can see the details. There's way too many of them, and some of them are above 4 or 5, so let's clean up a bit more. Press clean tracks and select the pixel number above which you wanna delete the trackers, like above 3 for example. Press X and delete them. Then solve again. 1.5 pixels, wow! Redo this process until only the best trackers are left. Remember to change the keyframes too. Get something that is showing the perspective change even more if you're still getting big solving errors. Sometimes deleting the trackers and starting over is better, trust me. You can keep refining until you get a pixel error that is good for you. Also check what you're refining. Sometimes this can break down your pixel error. 
just keep adding and cleaning those trackers. In the end, my pixel error was 0.18, which is very good. Now go to the bottom and set up the tracking scene. If we press Ctrl spacebar on this window, we can see that the cube isn't aligned with the markers. This should be the floor, and these are the walls. You can do it manually by moving and scaling the camera, which will help you work better with your 3D models later. All you gotta do now is add your models and animate them. There are many other things to cover, but maybe in a future video. So, in my next tutorial, I will show you how to make a shadow catcher in Eevee, which makes it more realistic and takes less computational power than cycles. Subscribe so you won't miss it. Thank you for listening until the end, I love you guys, I'm John Renders and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.